Guess what I just saw? The book right there. Yeah, I hope it doesn't read it backwards like it is for me right now. But, yep, I uh, got back well, a few minutes ago. I had to get something ready. A few minutes ago, I got back from seeing My Little Pony the movie. Uh, um, for instance, 2017, for instance. Um, yep, and, yep, look, there's no way. I, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Um, yeah, I do the LP vlog. I told you probably know my point, and so I had to talk about this. You know, I figured, to the take against it. You know, I do general review of recently released movies on my blog, including all the anime ones, and this would go into that, but I want to do something a bit more special, you know. And once it comes to DVD, I will talk about further on the blog. Um, and I'll later on explain what my full plans are for it. Um, you know, so, if you don't care for the vlog, well, you know, just know that at that point. And that will be going to play a spoiler, although... I won't say that if someone wants to come for me, we'll have to take it to, like, come more for Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I will come people I'll probably talk to, like, in private more about it, like, in Twitter DM or something like that. So, you know, so. But anyway, my little play for movie. Fetch and Magic now has a theatrical movie. No humans to be found. Except for the people in that meet. Okay, well, first of all, I got to talk about Fury of Phoenix a little bit. Um, uh, I talk at 1.10 p.m. Um, it's during a full day for the target audience, so only a few other people, one of two, I can't one, two kids, and by the way, I'm the only male, of course I was. Look, if this was a bigger town, and I caught it at a different time, I would have probably gotten a lot of girls, a lot of brownies. I got, um, there are two te teenager-ish, like, this, they could be little, but they're in that vein, and go so there, probably... To like female burning so they just I don't know, I like that they are a little cringy. So my brownie, but you know. And so only a few other people were there. Um you know, and um it took and the one the one of the little girls out there did talk, not an awful lot, but there were some times where it's like, yeah. But they looked young. pretty young. Um dung tough to you not being cool or something like that. Or you know. Yeah, but they can the good way to turn them out. We're coming back day during the credits. Like, I wait until I get to the squirrel credits, like I always do. Um, I don't care if I can put credit here or not. There might be. If there is, it'll get leaked anyway, like the whole movie did. Um, you know, so, there's that. Um, if some people stayed, like, even when I left, it was like, the corn credits had been on for, like, a little bit. So, when I left, and people were still there, I don't know why, maybe, it was for two teenage girls I talked about. So, they were probably there for a poke credit scene. You know, just in case the future show got to ask them to join the Avengers. Totally not a joke to be done before. Um, but, so, yeah, free to of future experience, the only, like, annoying part of them, like, well, there's a few minor things that typically didn't happen. Nothing crazy, like, nothing weird. Um, but it's just a normal video experience, so, um, um, so, just some smaller people. I, this one week I wish I could build a crowd with, because I feel like I would have got more enjoyment if I can't build a crowd. But the week, then again, something like Guardian 2, I enjoy even more than I normally would, because I go for a good crowd, but I still would have liked it, or loved and really liked it. But, I still got an okay crowd. Anyway. But anyway, so, okay, before we say anything, very good short before this movie, like we do with some of the for some it could tie into one of that, I got web theory, have I can't pronounce it, but it's, um, something, something full of treasure or something like that. The short was alright. What you would expect when I told you it's a web theory thing. It was fine. Nothing really in terms of, yeah, but it, the only weird thing is that right before the short, there was a card thing saying, first, the short, now, then the movie. While well, if usually they just run it, you know, um, you know, um, but go so that kind of thing. Probably because ain't that young girl and they want to let them know the movie. Because when I was a kid, there, there were some the short I got confused with the movie for a bit. But when I was particularly young, I mean, um, and I when I were a short dark from a Disney movie I'm seeing, like Pixar or whatever, I know some kids are probably confused. But so that was interesting. But let's get on to the movie. So, the short version is... Okay, well, you're probably wondering, did I like it? Yes, I did enjoy this movie. I'm going to either way, even if we were getting literally a country girl, 
again, I still would have enjoyed it, but it didn't get good. Yes, but with an asterisk, you know, because I will admit it, I was good and I enjoyed it, but I won't call it that good, and I will say I wasn't necessarily in love with it, but I still would say it is enjoyable. Um, and if you're wondering, no spoilers, well, I won't hint at a few things, but nothing too cranky. I kind of wish I could, so I can give you a better picture, but I'll do the best that I can to explain, you know, certain things, of course. Um, I'll admit, there are some disappointing elements, you know, some elements I was not disappointed by, but for the most part, I will say, if you're expecting, cut the movie, based on TV show, some of them are so good, they're some of the best material from that show. Some of the movie, the first uh, movie, are examples of this. I don't know if there are any other, but there goes Batman, Mac, and Phantasm, or something like that. If you're expecting that, you're not going to get it. But you're also not going to get Doug's first movie. Expect more the Powerpuff Girls movie, where it's a, definitely a good, fun extension of the show, but Doug has no cool flaws, and flaws that might, you know, some people will be on them, some people won't. And I will say, you know, it's more of that level, you know. Um, you know, but then again, I for some extended episode movie I do like, like Hey Arnold, the movie. Even though, speaking of which, I am a kind of very jungle movie, thank you very much. Got a new trailer drop today. Um, so, so yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I want to say both, I'm looking at this, looking at this from the perspective of both a fan and not a hardcore critic, obviously, uh, but a, a critic, and I am comparing it to other kid movies surrounding this, and the show, and other movies based on TV shows. And I will say that this is more in line with what you would see in other kid movies than the show, even though films like in the crossover work, but it is more on par with something like a couple weeks ago, or Lego Ninjago. It's more in line with that. They both have Michael Pena, actually. Um, still better than Michael Pena movies than Chip. <laughs> oh, Ooh, that's not a good one. But, um, but yeah. Oh, I'll say this. I don't know if every single anime movie Lion King has put out, but, um, they have put out Alpha and Omega, Happily Never After, and Nor of the North. This is better than all of them. Then again, I would say the same thing if they came out with Spark and Faint Tail or the Emoji movie. Go, let's not think anything. Bro, goddamn Lion Gate. Do you, do you, but, um, they think they finally have one I like, and I don't know of anything else they come up with anime why theatrically. They can direct a video movie occasionally. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but let's get into the nitty gritty in terms of the movie itself. Okay, so, let's do, oh, oh, I could go and give a writer and go all gave them. This movie was written by Megan McCarthy, Richia Hesio, and Michael Vogel. Um, I believe we're all right for the show, at least Michael Vogel and Megan McCarthy, of course. Rhea, possibly, but I don't know. Um, but they were so. But the plot and story are not too complicated. Basically, at the start, they are doing the friendship festival thing, the big thing, and Twilight is worried about where to be able to pull it off, yada yada. And then, of course, in the middle of conversation, of uh, some villains show up, particularly Tempest, with by Emily Blunt, who we have under, who's working for the Storm King, and these bad guys come in and they take over. They do, they wreck things up, um, and they, uh, basically put the princess in the, like, black crystal thing. And then the ponies are able to escape, and now have to go and get some help from the Hippogriff, and let you, uh, um, act them to. So we have to go try to find them, walk them, going for come over, play things along the way, and getting help. Um, go back, kind of it. Um, I'll address a few of minor things first. One of the big things some people are talking about is the animation. Um, because when a TV show goes to a movie, you have to change the animation a bit to make it big screen. And this movie does that. But some people are put off by how they're doing it. Um, the big thing will be the design. Um, the design got an upgrade. The main character, especially for the main character, the thing, stuff that the side character will look about the game, nothing too drastic. But the main kick and the print kick have been updated a bit. Particularly, some of them, the hoops and the mouth are a little different, and some people are distracted by the new design, and some people are not. I kind of love. I get, I'll say this, in the second half, I got used to them because I was getting invested or because I was focusing on other elements. 
but when it started, I was like, look, I got staring into my soul. It, it's distracting. You know, maybe because I'm too used to them, but you can kind of upgrade them. Well, everything else about their body looks fine. And some of them, like, Al Jack looks fine, for example, but Twilight is probably the most distracting. She's the main character. Um, and they are just huge, boxes, and, and, and the first half, there are some close-up shots where I'm like, ugh. But it's not horrifically distracting, but a little bit. And of course, there are the backgrounds, um, because they, they up upgrade the existing environment to look bigger and grander and different, you know, than they look. And they use either extra shading or CG. The CG, um, <clears throat> isn't going to look simple. To put it, um, you know, you know, bluntly. Um, not that some of it, some of it looks fine, and, you know, especially something el certain elements, like, later on. Like, for example, the underwater world they're going to looks really cool. They, I like the look of it. It's the best-looking environment, I think. It looks almost natural, probably because they're underwater. So, like, you need to make it look good. And the water itself, I think, looks really good. It's not, you know, not, you know... Now, for Twilight Flash, essentially, that, I don't know if it's Toy Flash, but it's definitely close to it, you know, but then there's the, the ship, they go on at one point, which I, I, I had to start a little bit, I went, oh, there's the ship on loan from Treasure Planet, it looks, not even not awful, but distracting, is the best word to describe it, the like CG at times, and even, and, and sometimes the background do look a little too different to the point where it doesn't feel like this world, like, it, it makes me so clear I'm watching a movie of this world rather than watching something that an extension or the same world bumped up, you know? And I understand it's like a hard balance, but I feel like something I mentioned with the Simpsons movie and the Funda movie, and even the Power Group movie to an extent, you know, it bumps it up significantly, but it, I still feel like it did a decent job make it feel like the same environment just bumped up. Here it does, but there are points where I'm like, it feels a little more alien to me than it. I think they intended, but it's, in the second half, they cool down on certain elements and spend more time at certain places, so it looks more interesting, more natural, and it probably won't forget to an underwater world that everything starts to look a lot more natural because they use less obvious elements, you know? You know, so that is the thing with the animation. In general, the character animation isn't very nice. It moves very well, I feel like, especially with certain characters like the villains. They move really nice, especially during equal numbers. Some of the animation looks really nice there. But character animation is really good in this, especially with certain characters like the Storm King and stuff like that, and uh, the Copper the Cat. Um, you know, you know, just kind of the thing kind. It's more like, you know. But um, so but again, it's not too big of a deal. But um, and then the other element would be the song, very big part of the show after all. Um, song got pretty good, honestly. Um, some people are slightly mixed, not fans, or some, some people think they're forgettable, some people think they're pretty good. I think they're pretty good, and some like they're very Broadway theatrical. Some songs are better than others, like, the opening song is fun, but it's fair to introduce them to a, you know, they're king to Twilight about how you got this, you know, we're here for you, blah blah, it's better for that reason than anything else. But it's a fun little song, but it's not gonna get a lot of people totally into it if they're not used to the show songs. But all the other songs, the only other, the only song I actively didn't like, um, they brought in Sia, who I've never heard of before this movie, before they announced her at least. Um, um, uh, they brought in her as a character named Combert Carinade. They, she is a fourth celebrity get in that yet. She appeared at the start and they make a deal of her, but she doesn't say anything. And they don't, then they really there for that scene, and only to remind you that they got her, then, like, they got her to a song, and they went, you know what, let's put you in the movie, and they did it, and they did it after they wrote the story, so, you get, so, she appeared free time, that first part, then later on, when we cut back to Ponyville, or Camelot, whatever, I think, um, and she just singing to herself, because she's a singer, we have to remind you she's in the movie. She, she, she is definitely, all the other celebrities, I'll, I'll say that in a minute, are, they aren't attracting, they aren't, they, they still get feel like, hey kid, get a celebrity, but this one, it's like, hey kid, get, yeah, you know, again, if I had never heard of them, to be fair, kids are more up on the musical scene than I am, 
you know, you know, I'm sure they know her fine, but I don't. And the song she gets is pop fluff. It's no, it, if you've heard a song at the end of a kid's movie like this, you probably heard this. This could be at the end of Boss Baby, Megan and Drago, and Spick Won't Be Free. It could have been any of those movies. You know, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. It mentioned Rainbow, that count connected to the MLP. And for the ending song, I bet it a little more. It is pop fluff, and, and well, P had done songs like that. The credits were going to be doing the credits, but the green and the came for the credits most of the time. Some of them do go a bit like that Make a Wish song. It's kind of like that, but that's a better song with it. Not that it's a bad song, it's just that I'm not only a fan of the pop fluff they put in the kids' movie, and this is that. And, you know. So, yeah, um, but, um, but, you know, but on to, and, of course, there is the other element some people bring up in terms of a character. In terms of the main, in terms of the main thing, they don't get an awful lot to do on their own. Um, Twilight gets the most to do, and, once again, and the other, well, they get varying degrees. They go from, you know, ha having a few lines and moments to help out, but that kind of it. To Picky Pie being a cock relief and eagle and helping out in some major thing like the climax, to Applejack getting a few lines. That it. Uh, she has a funny moment early on where I was not raised to the barn, and then she realized that she's talking, oh wait, like that was funny. But, you know, in one or two moments, but that, it's sort of anything else, you know. And Rarity and Raymond Nash, Raymond Nash at least gets a song. Uh, she starts the song. It was a great moment in the book where she, they're talking to the character and, and Raymond Ash gets him to perk up a bit and try to go, no, it's not time for, and it starts to show the song. They land jaded, you know. It does remind me of that pit in the pilot that they did, but oh well. Um, <laughs> you know. But it's still a funny joke. And there's some other bits that are a bit lamp shady here and there, like, I'll I'll get to well one element the villain but I'll get to him um and Spike off a line where they kind of he lamp shade in the fact they make a lot of friends you know um <laughs> you know but yeah but speaking of which Spike gets more to do than Applejack that sad <laughs> by the way there's a scene early on when Spike for when they first meeting up with a friend. Spike blushing out Rarity, cause that was a thing in the show, just in case you forgot. Wait, I got the I got door got flung open, then cracked, but you know. Um, but yeah, that moment just there to remind the audience and to tell the new audience. And I will say that, it's not a gigantic problem, but they kind of the problem of, we have to do certain things in order to introduce the character to an audience that might not know them, more so than to reintroduce them to, you know, all the old who maybe I like, like, refresher in some way. I feel like other movies do a better job incorporating that. Well, this movie, like, the very start of this movie, like, the first scene, um, in, it, it starts, you know, in Cancel Island. And you would get, hear some dialogue from the back of Pony before we meet Twilight, and it's really on the nose. It's like, there might well be the opening crawl telling us everything. There you go. <laughs> I put coming together in the Pony Awakens, or the last Pony episode, never mind. That's the only one coming out. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they're out. They do a better job than some of the links, but it's on the nose, nonetheless. But, yeah, in terms of the main kick, it had the same problem with some two part do, and some of the question girls we do, and that only Twilight really gets a lot to do in terms of the story. The story itself basically has her having an arc and learning something. And occasionally I'm confident the main kick. Kinda like they didn't bring a twilight particle. In fact, it can definitely similar to that in terms of the story in some way. Um, you know, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um I haven't technically talked about the story, but I just need to talk about the other thing. So I'll probably look again, they can more if you want me to gauge my reaction to the current thing more than definitive, but um hopefully it's working anyway. But yeah, and for some people, that would be disappointing. For me, it definitely was. I understand you can't have everyone show off all their depth, but you could have done more with characters like Fluttershy or something like that, you know? You know, give them more to do, or is it be punctuation to things? You know, but... Uh, better than go tightrope to walk, but 
we don't kind of feel like Twilight gets much development, and it's not like development we haven't seen from over four anyway. But um, but I will say that the new character in general are entertaining. I like them. In fact, I will say my two favorite characters in this movie. Um, one was from Swamp King, who went by Lee Driver. Um, he is having a lot of fun. Um, he know he knows what movie he can, so he just ham it up big time. And one of the characters in Drake that he hates cute things. But not to an annoying extent, but more very kind of lamp shading how some parents might feel. Uh, and it's fun. Um, Meyer Boy though, he can two games. Um, but he get but he makes them both out of them go. And the other big one would be Copper Cat, with by Ty Diggs. Um, I don't know much of him work, but he's a lot of fun too. He a really fly sort of cat. He's a cat, and it's perfect cat. He fly, and he's really fun. Um, yeah, he got a song about being a friend in a discount Agrabah battle. <laughs> it's different from that song, but it, yeah. But he gets really, he gets five of them, one of the better. The best song I feel like are that song and the villain song. Couple Court it is to me. But that song is all really theatrical, you know, it really, and emotional when it comes again. Go back, boy, go back, boy. He'll call him the kind of best. Um, um, go back, cool. Um, so yeah, well, and Emily Blunt character, um, Tempest, um, in her name. Uh, I liked her too. She got go fun, and not over the top, but more than DL. You know, she, you know, that, she definitely fun, and, you know, and we do go, we do get a little more into her and all. That thing I'll save. The bag of spoiler element I'll talk about on the blog. I have thoughts on it, but I do know that spoiler, so. Struggle what we do with her, but she go uh, the new character in general a kind of more than the old one. Maybe because I had to spend six and a half team with them, so I know everything they do working with these new characters, but they do offer more entertainment value. Ty Dig and Lee Driver, they are having a lot of fun, you can tell. You know, some people might find some of them be annoying or even fancy, but in any block could have a really good job. And well, we're cool what we do we have in this movie. Um, uh, Michael Pena, he's the um, um Skykick to the main villain, and that's all he is, honestly. He's fine, but he could have been by an actual wing actor. It's celebrity casting. The rest of the celebrity are all joking. Like, they bring something to a role, Ty Dig and Lee Schreiber especially. Um, going to Donna voicing a pirate parrot. Um, she's fine, but I forgot about her. Uh, she's not in an awful lot, though, so. But that's celebrity casting, too. Not bad, but, you know. Uh, Kristen Chenoweth is, um, um, basically a key pony. And very strong is no call upon the key pony. But she gets some more to do with Sony Arrogant. She, Kristen Chenoweth, go. And yes, she gets the king. Um, Chenoweth. And the queen, and the queen of the underworld world is with by, I'm not pronouncing that, but business! <laughs> go, if you follow your team here, there she is. It seems good, too, but it. it now, nah, I don't know her, I'm kind of dismissed, so I imagine other people might have more opinion on them. Um, and in terms of the rest of the voice casting, I think pretty good too, though. Uh, the main kick are all two looking great job, they've always done. They know better, but no worse. They all think it's considered. Um, a prince can, by the way, dispatched. It's that problem again. But, uh, yeah, well. Um,. But yeah, um, and every other character, like the Kim King, King Applejack, uh, Big Mac, they're just there for cameo. Um, so yeah, a Derpy get her obligatory cameo, too, go, so, okay, that. But actually, have one funny moment where they, they do the staff in order to King Skull and Crystal, they gap someone thinking it's Twilight, but they both wait, it's Derpy. <laughs> it perpetuates the prank of Derpy thing. Which was Big Mac, though. <laughs> but oh well, um, oh well. Um, wait a minute, why didn't they, why didn't they think everyone? Well, I guess they wanted to be able to control them, and they only throw for powerful people. You know, and they like throw to be back in it, but, yeah, I need muffins now, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> I don't think she's blind, though. But, you anyway, know, that, you know, but, and now, for a final, more important element to a movie that good, the story and the general way it goes about it. I will say the biggest component is definitely in terms of the writing. It's not bad. It's just that it's not great, and it's also nothing you haven't seen before, either a show or even other movies, but a kid movie that go on an adventure to another location. And that's one of the main gimmicks of a movie based on a TV show, whether it be even a movie or a fun movie, 
they will go to locations they have not gone to in the show, um, or do a fan thing, and come show to that movie, do that one of them. That's a big example of that. And all the elements that make it worthy of a movie are more in the presentation and going to other worlds, like the underwater world, and stuff like that. That stuff you could do in the show, but you might have the budget to pick the grand to get in and go and go with the movie so you can make it feel big. Like a lot of movies feel big, especially the third act where you get things big with the battle, and the villain, and the environment, you know, go. And that is the big advantage we have to make it feel like you're watching an experience where we a big screen. More so in the writing, which I would say you can tell it up a code, but I would say I have both elements. You know, the other thing, the story itself is definitely a hot to play to play thing, and they interact with different characters, and that kind of it. Um, Twilight has an arc in which she learns something about friendship and being with a friend and such, which is the gap problem I mentioned with the equestrian group being with a fourth one, falling in the category of only Tuncan or Twilight who gets the most development, and everyone else is there. And after four Quetcher Gulf movies, you think they would realize that there's more they can do. But I guess because we can went for a Mac audience, they feel like they can get away with doing things like that. Which is fine in some ways, but I know people who aren't fans who have that complaint. And again, that's why it's the most important to the character. You know. You know. Oh, in terms of the cliche kid movie thing, um, it hit a few of My most hated cliche in a kid movie again this. But done okay. But can I get my cliche? It done eh, it you there are two big cliches that tend to happen at the start of that and towards the end of the that. And you kinda know what cliche I'm talking about already. You've seen them in a lot of movies like this, but um but you know. But um and they the second one bothered me when the first one in terms of the execution of it, but you know, and that that element will bother some people because some people will want something you to have something that more like a Twilight Kingdom more than a typical two part like Return of Harmony or the pilot, which um you know I would argue a little deeper than this. It doesn't get much deeper than what you would expect, and I feel like it, some people won't be won over because yeah they're not gonna get something they can't get. Get any other of a kid movie or of a show, which. Some people won't mind, some people won't mind. From, you know, but I'll talk again on the blog, I'll go more detail on the writing, come come for your car in order, in order to talk fully about that. Oh, oh well. Um, but in general, the plot, you know, it, again, and, and it's like, you know, it's like, it's what you would expect. It basically in kind of like a two part of the show, but get to a big screen, and it do feel like it takes advantage in some elements, but in terms of the writing, it doesn't do anything. You know, the writing doesn't find anything deeper. I mean, there's a problem, but I can say the first Spongebob movie has a deeper story. With Spongebob worrying about being a kid and all that. Not that it's like amazingly deep or proper looking, but, you know, somewhat of a deep kind of story that didn't happen on the show or was not addressed in the show. Maybe that's the problem with doing this at you know, Kevin, where what can you do in a show you haven't already done before? Maybe if it can free, the tropes I mentioned won't be a problem. Although I still have to play in the sense that it's not that deep compared to come like a cancel on a wedding or something like that. You know, so it's still not that problem, just not to the extent. They, you know, even the things they do in the first act sort of a twist, you've seen that kind of thing on the show, definitely. So, but some people will care, some people won't. The reaction is like 64 amount to it right now, and reading the review, now I've seen a movie you can talk about, right? In terms of how it is. So some people clearly can get into adventure and have fun, and some people are like, nah, it's kind of a TV thing, you know? And I, I'm not calling it a consent episode, it isn't, but it's more like, it has elements of that. It's more theatrical than for me, but not theatrical and in terms of writing and I do, I would maybe come, well, the better example of that movie for that movie. May Pan Fan Fatango make a different story because of the kind of show it is, but um you know like that, you know? But um I go so it thinking more like a slightly over sheer, you know, like go come like we get full guy top growth movie, which I still quite like. I would argue for come out of do better than this. But um I this will quite a rewatch because I'm having anticipation, high anticipation because of 
me being a fan, and of course reading the current review, I'm really wanting to know more of what they're talking about in some way. You know, go back to review a second time after a death of Gettled, and after I can come over to the Cucket. Oh, Brad did a crew of that fun. Um, <laughs> he had to do him stop on the 1986 movie. I hear you, I've been there. Kind of. And he did Man of of Country Girls, and he'll have an interesting prediction. You know, obviously. I'm predicting not to be a gigantic fan of this one. You know, this you, but it'll be fun to see how much he looked like a creeper in the theater. I thankfully, hopefully, I hopefully didn't. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, I have been called creeper in a kid movie before, so. <laughs> I'll admit it. I mean, I can't it once for My Little Pony. I can't it normally, and the guy didn't react at all. He's like, okay. Like, if I asked him for play more, he would react to the same way. So, I feel like, I don't know, that's interesting. But yeah, go, yeah, the big point of contention is the writing and whether people feel like the a good story worth bringing to big screen, or more like it's the adventure element more than the story, because the story doesn't offer anything you wouldn't expect, nor anything deeper, even if that movie addict deepened. I've seen it before, and I don't think it's done to a toy fox looking level. Although, there is one scene toward the beginning of that three, which is found to be very interesting, in terms of something to like Sparkle Dog and why she dug it, and looking to him to suck it, um, even though it played out like a typical kid thing, I feel like that was a good chance to go a little deeper and, you know, because they go to other worlds in this movie and there's something they could have done, I can maybe, I don't know, there's something they could have done that would have been very relevant without being in your face about it. Not being political, necessarily, but, you know, that one. That's what I mean, you know? But they could have gone deeper, you know. I was thinking a way if they could have, it probably they could have got up that moment a little better too. But um, and now I'm getting more of it. I probably should have, but, but yeah, that my little pony movie for you. I talked with Freddie Mac about it and the phenomenon and all that, and man, I seen a reaction to this movie fascinating because I get it, you know. Overall, I both kind of enjoyed this. I swept up the adventure. It was a fun little adventure. A new character for the most part I did find entertaining. There were some interesting moments. Good song, mostly really nice animation. Um, it represents the show and it can't that it's not insulting to the show. It doesn't stay true to the spirit. It just the movie doesn't add an awful lot that the show doesn't already give you, you know, a, in a typical day with some of the main characters not getting a lot to do, you know. The story being nothing too deep. Not that I'm expecting, you know, inside out, but I'm expecting maybe deeper than birth, you know. It's fine, a little deeper than that one, but it's in that line rather than, um, you know, you know, like, um, you know, like Kuo and Hustring or Kutopia. Not that, I don't think we should be expecting that every time, but, you know, some kids are going to be My Little Pony or Lego Ninjago, we're not, but at least it's not, you know, Spark and Faith Tale of the Emoji movie. <laughs> so, um, I will, honestly, every kid movie that comes out after Emoji movie, Will make people go, well, at least it's not the emoji movie. I didn't even hate it that much if you remember from my blog review and stuff, but you know, but that neither here nor there. Um But yeah, I okay, I did have fun with this movie and I did like it. It's just that I was disappointed in the kind I was expecting something that could at least be really good, maybe even great, like I view you know, the movie in front of me, or even the Rugrats movie, the first two, especially. I feel about some things with the MMO, but in general, I think both do give you a deeper experience than the show would, because the show is not very deep most of the time, of course. Um, but the show, I did the thing. Rainbow Rock, I thought, was a better movie than this, because it did go more interesting and deeper of a character arc and story, if not amazingly so. You know, more so than the show could do at that point, more than this. And that problem would again if it made a few years before. Being not to be extent, but it probably still would. Oh, and if you're wondering where we go in the screen, Starlight appear and connect to Tricky in one scene, go after that, because no kind of prank. Um, Starlight, because they can probably made while they were doing game 5 for Kevin to go, Shank of R, they couldn't include Starlight in the bigger role other than that. But she's there, she could try actually in the background. So, uh, Kara Sheridan did not get a line, I don't think she was voicing another character. Um, which would have been a nice payoff, like, you know, trade-off, but I'll know. Um, yeah, but, but, um, 
there you go. Now tell me you finally brought to big screen. And it is definitely a fun little movie. So if you're if you want to keep the character you love on the big screen in a fun adventure, and if you in general want to keep a fun adventure for kids, you're gonna get that. But if you want anything more than that, you're gonna have to lower your expectations. Not some gang that can like totally mind the fluff that only kids can like. Nah, I'm not saying that. It's not that level. But it's definitely a level of love. You're not gonna get anything more than you might get in some other movies like this. So expect just a fun movie, you know? Because some people like and keep liking this more because they're more forgiving of repeating certain elements and of certain twists, you know? Because there are potential people like some deeper elements, even if there are deeper elements that I've seen before. And obviously, someone who seems less things than I have. But, um. But that really just depends on the person. What guy hoping for a Malapony movie that would be one of the best things I've seen from the show? Well, you know, to a level of, you know, the, maybe not quite Kindle, but at least the Candlelight, like the better part of Candlelight Wedding and stuff like that. Yeah, and I'm disappointed we didn't quite get that. Not that I'm expecting the show to show all the interesting of the movie to have deep on the show a lot. It's gotta be a Mac audience. You have to, you know, not dumb things down, but simplifying. I get that. It's just that I wasn't expecting maybe more than what we got, but what we got. It's more entertaining than other movies of this nature, I will say. It's more entertaining than, for, for example, um, which I did like fine. But, um, and it's probably better than Virtue Gretchen Girl and Legend of Everfree, which had the same flog of repeating elements, particularly Legend of Everfree. But, um, that nature of the beast is a kind of movie, go. So. But take that for what it's worth, I suppose. Um, you know, go, yeah. Playing the show probably should be it. As long as you're willing to see it, as long as you're against it, but if you're a fan of the show and you can see it and you do want to see it, see it. And yeah, the 2D animation thing also kind of help, but who knows whether this will help save it or... If anything, I won't really be on a TV show again. Bit good one. You know, I don't want everything to be teacher pet movie, which I'm sure is good, but at the same time, who asked for that, you know? <laughs> it's for all four fans of the show are asking for that. No, it's actually 2013. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, they're not the Bob Burger movie. Not sure if that show could be relevant by then. And I don't like it, it's just that it can sing an 8, you know? Um, there's a lot of hot movies. We're getting a few more. Maybe the show will get more winglet. This one will get more winglet. But yeah, go back to what I have to say. There's plenty more I have to say, either based on things I already talked about and going deeper, or elements I didn't talk about for spoiler reasons. When I do the blog thing, I will go into de more detail. Now, my initial plan would to do a theme by theme review, like I do with most movies on the blog, but I don't know if this will lend that well to that, because there will come a plenty of scenes where all I have to say is stuff I've said earlier, or I don't have a. I'll have. Most of what I've said can be said either in general, or it can be condensed into the first like, 30 to minutes and the last 30 minutes. So, my plan at the moment will be just do something more general. More of a. Something like in between general review and a human king review where I'll go in a lot of detail on basically everything, but I won't go theme by theme, you know? So, but see like a deeper general review. Go so not general, I guess. I call them that because they are my first impression instead of something I totally get done, you know? And that's why I made them more simple. Yeah. So, so that, but either way, that's where you better Call of Duty and. Let's see, October, go November, December, January, January, late January-ish to February, will this come out on DVD and Blu-ray? Um, I'll probably just get DVD unless the Blu-ray has something extra, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but I will be getting another look, and come on time around then, maybe a little bit after, but obviously I have to think about it and stuff like that even more. But come time around then, there will be a thing on the blog where I go into detail about the movie, and talk about certain thing I couldn't talk about here for Bullet Ring and Gore, just because I, you know, didn't feel like getting it here. But I already ranted for 40 minutes about the thing. Go into description, in the description, there will be a short version, and I'll, you know. So, there, you know what? I'm gonna wrap it up here. That is my little pony movie for you. It's a movie I had that came on, like I do it did when I talked about Friendship Gang and Legend of the Everfree. Um, so. So I have the King of Fun little movie, and I feel like it's definitely a fun kid movie. But if you want something more than that, you will have to not want more than that. I'm not. Look, yeah, I'm a little disappointed in some areas, but I did have a fun time regardless, you know. 
but some people aren't demanding a guy can be a time go. I understand I might just be nitpicking or I might just be asking for too much. But I would like I want better than current Apple Google Show and not more like if I were to rate the along the Apple Google Show, I'd rate the same way I would rate, you know, well the two parts that are pretty good but not amazing. You know, more like that or you know, Gretchen Girl 1 and 4 oh, might be a little better than the link away, and again, that I got more out of you know, we got more in terms of that's going at least, especially if we're calling it Gretchen. But, take that for it, of course. Some people will like this more, some have, but most of the ones I will like more than me are fans, or those who obviously aren't cool than I can be, even they are not fans, so. Go, don't like to just go see it if you want to. Just lower your expectation a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, and you'll probably have some fun with the movie if you can. You know, uh, if you're not a fan of the show, I would, okay, depending. In general, I'd say wait for DVD if you're um, if you're already weird out by the Brody thing anyway, but you're still interested, then wait then. I don't think the movie is so good that you'll be swayed by it and you need to see it. You know, but that's all up to you whether you want to see the computer or not, or you wait for DVD. You know, but, um, you know, you know, go, there you go, go. Yeah, so, yeah, I'll get the game more at a later date, but verify first impression of my movie, 2017. Whew, man, it's been a crazy calendar year getting up to this point. To, to from the small little show, to a theatrical movie with celebrity, and a game theater for everyone to be. You know, for better or worse, I'm glad we made it to this point. And I can't wait to see where the show goes from here. Even if, but I'll camp when I get to the end of the weekend. By the way, new episode tomorrow. Yeah, didn't think there'd be a new episode the day after the movie, but I'll see you tomorrow to talk about the Geplin one. I can't remember the full name. Something, something Geplin. Also, Marvel's thing called Halloween Epicode. Sorry, I'm okay, Christmas. The Halloween Epicode, which I get the name of Halloween Crematorium or something. I'll talk about Buffalo tomorrow, and I will have plenty of fun doing go. Go, bad final playing movie. Go, take that for what worth. And I'm sorry, you look so long and rambly, but it's a movie. Well, I shall see you for the next thing I talk about. Goodbye.